All right, so we have Keeper 4.2, Interval of Convergence. Um, this is very similar to what we did yesterday, except these problems are not geometric. And so I can't use the 1 over 1 minus x to find my interval. I have to use something else. Now, preferably when you do these, you're going to want to use the ratio test, but you can also use the root test um, because both of those prove absolute convergence. Um, now, if you took your notes, you should remember that there are three different scenarios. You can either have something that converges on an interval, um, you can have something that di diverges, or you can have something that converges absolutely. And so those are the three scenarios that we want to look at today. All right, so let's go ahead and start number one. Um, we have a long sum, and again, I'm just going to go ahead and use the ratio test. So if you remember for ratio, we have the limit as n goes to infinity, and we have the absolute value, and then we take the function, but everywhere we see it n, we put n plus 1. So I'm going to have 4x minus 12 to the n plus 1 all over negative 3 to the n plus 3, and then n plus 1 squared plus 1. All right, and then we take that and we multiply that by the reciprocal of the original. So we have negative 3 to the 2 plus n, and then n squared plus 1, all over 4x minus 12 to the n. All right, so if you remember what the ratio test after you get it all set up nice and pretty, um, you're simply just going to reduce it down. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show all of my steps on this first one just to, you know, like, bring it back to your remembrance, but you should be able to do it, you know, all at one time in your head. So for me, I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity. Absolute value, I'm going to break this up to be 4x minus 12 to the n times 4x minus 12 to the first, all over negative 3 to the n, and then negative 3 cubed, and then I still have that n plus 1 squared, plus 1 times negative 3 squared, negative 3 to the n, n squared plus 1, all over the 4x minus 12 to the n. All right, so now that I have it broken down, and again, this that step is really not necessary. I'm just doing it because, um, because I want you guys to make sure you understand and see the steps, but you don't actually have to do that if you understand. But once I have it broken down, now I can start canceling stuff out. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. This is going to cancel with this. This is going to cancel with this. And this is going to cancel with this, but leaving me negative 3 down here. And so I have the limit as n goes to infinity of 4x minus 12 times n squared plus 1 all over negative 3 times n plus 1 squared plus 1. Now, remember, we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, so n is the variable that I'm concerned with here. And so if I look at the top of my function, the degree of the numerator is 2, or squared. And then the denominator, the degree, is also squared. So when I take that limit, since they're both squared, I know that I could just simply take the lead coefficient. Now, the lead coefficient of the top is going to be 4x minus 3, or sorry, 4x minus 12 over negative 3. All right, and so because it's in absolute value, I could technically just write it as 4x minus 12 over 3. All right, so this thing, I got an actual answer out of it. That means it's going to converge on some interval. And so now all I have to do is figure out that interval. Now, if you remember for your ratio test, you want the absolute value to be less than 1, or you want the function itself to be between negative and 1 and 1. Remember, that's what absolute value means. So I'm just going to take my answer, and I'm going to set up an inequality. So I have negative 1 is less than 4x minus 12 over 3 is less than 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. I'm going to add 12. And then I'm going to divide by 4. So 
So here I have that um, 9 fourths is less than X is less than 15 fourths. Now with these tests, you actually have to check to see if the 9 fourths and the 15 fourths are included in your interval. Because we use the ratio test, if I put the 9 fourths back into the function, I would get 1. And remember, when, when I do the limit, I would get 1. And so if you remember, um, with the ratio test, we're inconclusive at 1. And so because we're inconclusive, we can't decide, we actually have to do a check to see what that function will give us. All right, so every one of these tests that you do, you have to check your endpoints um, to see if they're included or not included in the interval. All right, so let's do our check. So the first check I'm going to do is for x equals 9 fourths. All right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that x back into the original um, summation. So I have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 4 times 9 fourths minus 12 to the n all over negative 3 to the 2 plus n and then n squared plus 1. Alright, so if I simplify this, I get the sum as n equals 0 to infinity. Uh, 4 times 9 fourths is 9. 9 minus 12 is negative 3 to the n over negative 3 to the 2 plus n and then n squared plus 1. All right, so from here, I could break this down. Remember, this um, negative 3 to n is going to cancel with this negative 3 to the n, and I'm going to be left with negative 3 squared. So I'm going to write that underneath it. I'll change colors. I have this is really negative 3 squared, negative 3 to the n, and that's going to cancel with that. And so when I write my summation, I'm going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 9, n squared plus 1. So now the question is, does this summation converge or does it diverge? Well, we learned that last unit. That was like the entire last unit. Um, so in this problem, I guess the easiest way to figure out convergence or divergence would be to do like a quick um, comparison test. So I might do something like compare to the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n squared. Um, and then I just need to show that I'm less than that converge. So, um, and I know that this converges by P series. Since P equals 2, which is greater than 1. All right, so now that that converges, I'm going to show that I'm less than a converge. So I have 9 N squared plus 1 is for sure greater than N squared. And then when I write it as a fraction, I get 1 over 9 n squared plus 1 is less than 1 over n squared. So since I'm less than a converge, I know this converges by comparison test. All right, now I have to do my other check. So I have to check the x equals 15 fourths. And so again, I'm going to take my original summation. I'm going to put that 15 fourths in there. So I get 4 times 15 fourths minus 12 to the n over negative 3 to the 2 plus n times n squared plus 1. Then I'm going to clean that up. So I'm going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity. On top, I'm going to be left with 4 times 15 fourths is um, 15. 15 minus 12 is 3. So 3 to the n over and then I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bottom part and so I'm going to when I clean up this bottom part I'm going to be left with negative 1 to the n times 3 to the n times 3 squared times n squared plus 1 and again that's just all properties of exponents um, that I'm, I'm able to manipulate that function like that all right so now I have that these three of the n's cancel out and I'm left with the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over negative 1 to the n times 9 times n squared plus 1. And so right here, I see that this is clearly an alternating series. So I'm going to run an alternating series test on it. And so I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 9 n squared plus 1 equals 0. So that's my first check. 
And then I also have to show that that's decreasing. So I'm just going to say I know that um, n is less than n plus 1. All right. And then I could say something like 9. Um, well, let me square it first. So I could say like n squared is less than n plus 1 squared. And then I'm just going to kind of build the rest. So like 9 n squared plus 1 has to be less than 9 n plus 1 squared plus 1. And when I flip it, I'm going to have 1 over 9 n squared plus 1 is greater than 1 over 9 n plus 1 squared plus 1, which means that I'm decreasing. Well, since the limit equals 0 and I'm decreasing, I know this is also going to converge by all series tests. All right, so right here I see that both of my endpoints do converge. That means my interval of convergence is simply going to be 9 fourths to 15 fourths. Notice I put it in brackets since it's converging. And then I also need to find my radius. And my radius is the half of the distance of that interval. Um, so if that interval basically is um, 9 fourths to 15 fourths, um, I can simply cut that in half, that distance, and I would get a radius of 3 fourths. All right, hope you guys got that. All right, so example two, we're going to work it the same way. I'm going to do it a little different this time just to show you kind of the variations of it. Um, but this one, I noticed that everything is being raised to an n versus in the last problem, we had a polynomial down here. Um, so everything wasn't necessarily raised to the n. But since everything in this problem is raised to the n, I'm going to go ahead and do the root test. And so for the root test, I do the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n to the 2n plus 1 over 4, 4 to the 3n times 2x plus 17 to the n. And I'm going to raise that to the 1 over n or the nth root of it. All right, so when I raise that to the 1 over n, I'm basically reducing um, all of my exponents by the n. And so if I rewrite that, I have the limit as n goes to infinity of this is going to become n to the 2n divided by n, which will be 2 plus 1 over n over 4 cubed times 2x plus 17. So again, I brought that 1 over n into each piece of my exponent. Top and bottom. All right. And so now if I do this limit as n goes to infinity, I'm going to get infinity plus zero times some other nonsense, which is simply infinity, which is greater than one. That means this diverges by the root test. Now, please understand, I could have still used um, I could have still used ratio test if I wanted to. I'm just showing you guys how the root test can work for you. All right, so now that I know this thing diverge, diverges, the only place it's going to converge is at the center. And this is what we call the center, the piece that has the x, um, the x plus whatever. So it's going to converge when 2x plus 17 equals 0 or when x equals negative 17 over 2. And so my interval of convergence is a single number. So I put it in a curly bracket and I say negative 17 over 2. And my radius, since it's a single number, my radius is simply going to be 0. All right, so that was like your second um, type of, of convergence problem. Now I don't have to check any endpoints or anything like that because I don't have an actual interval. All right, moving along, we have number three. Um, and so for number three, I don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and use the ratio test again. So I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 2 times x minus 2 to the n plus 1 all over 2n plus 3 factorial 
times that reciprocal of 2n plus 1 factorial over um, n plus 1 x minus 2 to the n. All right, so now if I simplify this out, and I'm not going to show all my steps this time. Um, you guys, again, should be at the point where you can simplify this pretty easily. The n plus 2 is going to stay on top. This x minus 2 to the n is going to cancel with this x minus 2 to the n, and we're just going to be left with x minus 2 to the first. Um, and then my factorials are going to cancel. So this factorial is going to cancel with that one. But I'm going to have, on the bottom, I'm going to have 2n plus 3. And then 2n plus 2, because then 2n plus 1 will cancel out. And I still have this n plus 1 in my denominator. All right, so now when I look to take my, um, my limit, my degree in my denominator is 3, whereas the degree in the numerator is 1. So that means the denominator is bigger, which means my limit equals 0, which is less than 1. That tells me I'm going to converge absolutely by the ratio test. And since I'm converging absolutely, that means I'm converging every single place. My interval of convergence is going to be negative infinity to infinity, and my radius is going to be infinity. Half of the interval would be just infinity. All right, moving on to number four. Um, again, we can use ratio, we can use root. I'm just going to go with ratio this time. I told you guys before, ratio is my favorite test to run. So I'm going to have 4 to the 2n plus 3, then x plus 3 to the n plus 1, over 5 to the n plus 2, times the reciprocal of 5 to the n plus 1, over 4 to the 1 plus 2n, and then x plus 3 to the n. All right, so now when I clean this up, I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity. And on top, it looks like these 4 to the 2 ends are going to cancel. I have 4 cubed and a 4 down here. That's going to leave me 4 squared, which is 16. Um, then my x plus 3 is going to cancel, leaving me just the x plus 3 to the 1. Um, and then those five ends are going to cancel, leaving me just five in my denominator. And so that limit, because all of my ends canceled out, that limit is actually just going to be the function itself. So 16x plus 3 over 5. Now, since I got an actual answer, it wasn't, you know, converged absolutely or it wasn't infinity or anything like that, I can set up my inequality. So again, I know that this value right here has to be between negative 1 and 1. And then I can multiply both sides by 5. I can divide by 16. And then I can subtract 3. So subtracting 3 is going to give me negative 53 over 16. It's less than x is less than negative 43 over 16. All right, so again, that's technically my interval, but I have to check those endpoints. Anytime I get an interval, I have to check my endpoints. All right, so let's start with checking the left-hand side. Um, so let's check x equals negative 53 over 16. And so again, remember, I'm going to plug that back into my original summation. So I have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 4 to the 1 plus 2n over 5 to the n plus 1 times negative 53 over 16 plus 3 to the n. All right, now if I simplify that out really nicely, um, I'm going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity um, of 4 to the 2n plus 1 times, this looks like it cleans up to negative 5 over 16 to the n all over 5 to the n plus 1. All right, so cleaning that up some more, 
I'm going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity. This is going to be like um, 16 to the n times 4 for this first piece. Then I'm going to have times negative 5. Well, let me write it as negative 1 to the n. And then 5 to the n all over 5 to the n times 5 times 16 to the n. So again, just mess with those properties of exponents. All right, so once I have that, I can go ahead and clean it up one more time. The 16 to the n is going to cancel. The 5 to the n is going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with negative 1 to the n times 4 over 5. Now this, um, this right here, I'm looking at it, and I see that if I was to do the limit of this, it wouldn't equal 0. It would not exist. It's going to oscillate between negative 4 fifths and 4 fifths. So I can do a quick check and say the limit is n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times 4 fifths does not exist, which doesn't equal 0. So I know I'm diverging by divergence test. All right, so that first side, that first endpoint diverges. Now, if I check the second one, so x equals negative 43 over 16. Plug that back into my original. So I have n equals 0 to infinity on my summation. 4 to the 2n plus 1 over 5 to the n plus 1 times negative 43 over 16 plus 3 to the n. Um, and I clean that up, I get the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 4 to the 2n plus 1, over 5 to the n plus 1, times, if I add that up, it looks like I get 5 over 16 to the n. Alright, so then, again, I'm going to mess with this a little bit. So I have n equals 0 to infinity, that's 16 to the n, times 4, times 5 to the n over 5 to the n times 5 times 16 to the n. And so again, this cancels with this, this cancels with that, all right? So I'm left with the sum, n equals 0 to infinity of 4 fifths. And so again, if I do the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 fifths, that equals 4 fifths, which does not equal 0. So therefore, again, I'm diverging by divergence test. So that means both endpoints diverge, which means my interval of convergence is negative, five, negative 53 over 16 to negative 43 over 16. Notice I put it in parentheses since it, um, since it diverged on both intervals or both endpoints. And then my radius would be half of that interval, half the distance from um, negative 53 over 16 and negative 43 over 16, and that would be... 5 over 16. All right, cool. Keep it moving. All right, so number five, same kind of concept. We're going to use, in this one, let's just use the ratio test again. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, absolute value 6 to the n plus 1 times 4x minus 1 to the n all over n plus 1 times the reciprocal, so that's going to be n over 6 to the n, 4x minus 1 to the n minus 1. All right, so if I clean this up, I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, the 6 piece is going to be left with 6 on top. Um, the 4x minus 1 to the n is going to leave me 4x minus 1 on top because this one's raised to the negative one, which will flip it to the numerator. And then I'm going to be times n, and then over n plus 1. And so again, the degree of my top is 1, the degree of my bottom is 1, so I'm left with 6 times 4x minus 1 as my answer, which means I do have an interval. All right, so again, we have negative 1 is less than 6 times 4x minus 1 is less than 1, or negative 1, 6 is less than 4x minus 1 is less than 1, 6. 
if I add that 1, I'm going to get um, 5, 6 is less than 4x is less than 7, 6. And then if I divide by 4, I get 5 over 24 is less than x is less than 7 over 24. Now, again, because I actually got an interval, I got to check those endpoints. So, again, I'm doing a quick check on it. And I'm going to check x equals 5 over 24 first. And so I take that and I plug it back into my original. So I have 6 to the n over n times 4 times 5 over 24 minus 1 to n minus 1. All right, so cleaning that up, I get the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 6 to the n over n times, this is going to give me um, 5, 6 minus 1 would be negative 1, 6 to the n minus 1. All right, so now breaking that down using my exponent rules, I have n equals 1 to infinity, 6 to the n, and then I have um, negative 1 to the n, um, then I have, let's see, bleh, 6 to the n down here, or sorry, 6, just straight 6, because that's going to come up up top, and then I'm going to have n in my denominator. So again, let me recap that. I have, um, I have 6 to the n, then I have negative 1 to the n, I can put n minus 1 to be precise, and then, um, I have in my denominator, I have 6 to the n down here, which I didn't write, and then just straight n in my denominator. All right, so cleaning that up, I have sum n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1 times 6 over n, um, and that is going to be an alternating series. So I can just simply do the limit as n goes to infinity of 6 over n, which is 0. And then I can show that it's decreasing. So I can say n is less than n plus 1. 1 over n is greater than 1 over n plus 1. And 6 over n is greater than 6 over n plus 1. Therefore, decreasing. And so that's going to converge by alternating series tests. All right, now if I check the other, the other endpoint, I'm checking x equals 7 over 24. So again, I'm putting that back into my function. So I have 6 to the n over n times 4 times 7 over 24 minus 1 to the n minus 1. Uh, cleaning that up, I get sum n equals 1 to infinity, 6 to the n over n times that's going to be 7 6 minus 1 so that's going to be 1 6 to the n minus 1 all right so if i go one more time with the cleanup n equals 1 to infinity i'm going to get 6 to the n 1 to the n minus 1 i don't need to write that that's just 1 over n times 6 to the n times 6 on top all right so then if i reduce that down I have 6 over n, and I know that this is going to diverge by p series. So I'm going to say p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, diverge by p series. Or I could have said harmonic. All right, so I have one side is converging, one side is diverging. That means when I write my interval of convergence, on the side that converged, I need to put a bracket. And the side that diverged, I need to put a parenthesis. And then my radius, I just need to find the halfway between 7 over 24 and 5 over 24, which would be 1 over 24. All right. Number 6. Um, now let's go with the ratio test again. So let's do limit. As n goes to infinity, absolute value, um, I'm going to have 6 to the negative n, and then x plus 4 to the n plus 1 over 
negative 2 to the negative 2n plus 1 times negative 2 to the 3 minus 2n times, or sorry, over 6 to the 1 minus n, and then x plus 4 to the n. All right, so again, very simply, I'm going to break this down um, and just work it all the way out. So again, if I break this down, my 6s are going to cancel, and 6 to the n is going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with 6 in my denominator. And then this x plus 4 to the n plus 1 is going to cancel with that, leaving me x plus 4 in my numerator. And then the negative 2 stuff is going to cancel, leaving me 2 squared on top, which would be 4. And again, because I wasn't left with any n, I know that the limit is just going to be the function itself, so 2 thirds times x plus 4. All right, so now if I set this up, I have negative 1 is less than 2 thirds x plus 4 is less than 1. Or negative 3 halves is less than x plus 4 is less than 3 halves. And then I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. So I'm going to get negative 11 halves is less than x is less than uh, negative 5 halves. So again, now I have to check my, my endpoints. Alright, so I'm checking x equals negative 11 over 2. And so when I put that into my summation, I get sum n equals 0 to infinity, 6 times 6 to the 1 minus n over negative 2 to the 3 minus 2n times negative 11 over 2 plus 4 to the n. And so if I clean that up, um, I'm going to get the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 6 to the 1 minus n over negative 2 to the 3 minus 2n. And then if I do negative 11 over 2 plus 4, it's going to be 6, 8. So I'm seeing negative 3 over 2 to the n. And then if I was to reduce all of this down, um, so I have the sum n equals 0 to infinity, and I reduced all of that craziness down, I would get negative 1 to the n times negative 3 fourths. All right, so again, for me, I'm going to do a quick limit. So n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n, negative 3 fourths. That does not exist because it's oscillating, which does not equal 0. So I'm diverging by divergence test. All right, now if I go ahead and check the other endpoint, I have x equals negative 5 halves. I'm plugging that into my sum. So I have 6 to the 1 minus n over negative 2 to the 3 minus 2n times negative 5 halves plus 4 to the n. If I reduce that down, I get 6 to the 1 minus n over negative 2 to the 3 minus 2n. And again, if I clean this up, it looks like I'm just going to have, um, let's see, 8 minus 3, that's just 3 halves. All right, and uh, cleaning that up a little bit more, like reducing everything down that I could possibly reduce down, I would get the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 3 fourths. All right, now um, I know again I can do a quick limit on that. That equals negative 3 fourths, which doesn't equal 0, so that's diverging by the divergence test. So both of my endpoints diverged, and since both of them diverged, um, I simply know that my interval of convergence is going to be what I found on an open interval with a radius of that halfway, which halfway between negative 11 over 2 and negative 5 over 2 
is three halves. Remember, we're talking about distance, so your radius is always positive. All right, let's keep going. Number seven, um, we have ten to the x, ten x minus one to the n, and then over n to three plus n. I'm going to use a root test on this one. So I have limit as n goes to infinity, um, and I'm going to have this 10x minus 1 to the n over n to 3 plus n, and I'm going to raise that to the 1 over n or the nth root of it. All right, so now that I have that, I'm going to bring that nth root into all my pieces. So I have limit as n goes to infinity, and it's going to be 10x minus 1 over um, n to the 3 over n plus 1. All right, and so now when I take that limit, because n is in my denominator, I know this limit equals 0, which is less than 1, which tells me it converges. And not only does it converge, but it converges absolutely by the root test, which means that my interval of convergence is all real numbers, and my radius is infinity. All right, so number eight, I'm using the ratio test. So I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, we have 3n plus 3 factorial um, times 6x minus 9 to the n plus 1 over um, 2n factorial times the reciprocal, which would be 2n minus 2 factorial over 3n factorial times 6x minus 9 to the n. All right, now cleaning this up, I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, I'm going to have, if I break down this factorial on top, I have 3n plus 3, and then 3n plus 2. I have 3n plus 1, and then the 3n's are going to cancel. Um, and then if I break down this 6x minus 9, I'll be left with 6x minus 9 in my numerator all over my denominator will break down to be 2n and then 2n minus 1 and then 2n minus 2 would cancel out all right so if i look at my degrees my degree on my top is 3 because i have three ends the degree on the bottom is 2 um because i only have two ends so because the top is bigger this is going to infinity which is greater than 1 which tells me that i diverge by the root test. And so that means my interval of convergence is simply my center. And so my center, let me, I'll show my work on that. My center, remember, is this piece right here. So the center is 6x minus 9. Set that equal to 0, I get x equals 9 over 6, which really equals 3 over 2 reduced. So again, my interval of convergence is curly bracket 3 over 2 with the radius of 0. So remember, when you diverge, you do have an interval of convergence at a single number, and that single number is where your center equals 0. All right, keeping it going, we've got two more. Um, so we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, n squared over 4n plus 1 times 5x plus 20 to the n. I'm going to run a ratio test on this one. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, I'm going to do, and I'm going to drop that negative 1 to the n since, I'm, since the ratio test is really just absolute value. And so I'm going to have n plus 1 squared times 5x plus 20 to the n plus 1 over 4n uh, plus 5 times the reciprocal of 4n plus 1 over n squared 5x plus 20 to the n. All right, so cleaning this up, canceling all my stuff out. I'm going to have on top, I'm gonna still have that n plus 1 squared. I'm also going to have one of the 5x plus 20s when I cancel it out with the denominator. Um, I'm going to have also that 4n plus 1. And then in my denominator, I'm going to have 4n plus 5 and n squared. 
All right, so the degree of my top looks like it's 3 because I have n squared and then I have another n. The degree of my bottom looks like it's 3 because I have an n and an n squared. So all I need to do is figure out my lead coefficient. Um, my lead coefficient for this is going to be 5x plus 20. And really, to be truthful, it's 5x plus 20 times 4, but I have the 4 on the top and the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about writing that. All right, so I got an answer. I got to set up my interval. I have negative 1 is less than 5x plus 20 is less than 1. Subtract the 20, I get negative 21 is less than 5x, is less than uh, negative 19. And then dividing by 5, I get negative 21 over 5 is less than x, is less than negative 19 over 5. And so again, now I have to check my endpoints. And so the first check I'm going to do is the left endpoint of x equals negative 21 over 5. Plugging that back into the original summation. I have negative 1 to the n times n squared, or 4n plus 1 times 5 times negative 21 over 5 plus 20 to the n. All right, now this piece in parentheses right here is simply going to give me negative 1 to the n. And so this negative 1 to the n and this negative 1 to the n is just going to give me 1. And so I'm going to be left with the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of n squared over 4n plus 1. All right, I know that this is going to diverge by the divergence test because if I do the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 4n plus 1, um, that's going to give me infinity because my numerator is bigger, which is greater, which is not equal to 0. So I diverge by divergence test. Now if I check my other endpoint of x equals negative 19 over 5, plugging that back into the original, I get negative 1 to the n, n squared over 4n plus 1 times 5 times negative 19 over 5 plus 20 to the n. All right, so this piece is going to give me 1 to the n. That's just 1, so I don't really care about that too much. And so I'm left with um, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, n squared, over 4n plus 1. All right, so again, if I run a divergence test on this, I'm going to get um, the limit as n goes to infinity, negative 1 to the n, n squared, over 4n plus 1. That's going to give me positive infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity. Um, so that doesn't exist, which doesn't equal zero. So I'm diverging by divergence test. So both of my endpoints diverged. Um, that means my interval of convergence is going to be what I found on an open interval. So negative 21 fifths to negative 19 fifths with parentheses. And the radius is the halfway distance, so the radius is simply one-fifth. All right, last example. Um, we have a nice little funky-looking equation. Again, I'm going to go with the ratio test on this. And so I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Of Again, I'm going to drop off that negative 1 to the n. Since it's the ratio test, I can do that. I have 8 to the n plus 2 over n plus 5 times x minus 7 to the n plus 1 times reciprocal n plus 4 over 8 to the n plus 1 x minus 7 to the n. All right, if I clean that up, I get the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to be left with an 8 on top. Um, I'm going to be left with the x minus 7 on top. I'm going to be left with the n plus 4 on top, all over n plus 5 on the bottom. Everything else is going to cancel out. All right, so here I see that my degrees are the same. I have n to the first, n to the first here. So this is going to be 8 times x minus 7. All right, so setting up my inequality, I have negative 1 is less than 8. x minus 7 is less than 1. 
or negative 1 eighth is less than x minus 7 is less than 1 eighth. And then if I add 7 to both sides, I get 55 eighths is less than x is less than 57 eighths. All right, so now I got to check those endpoints. So I have the left endpoint at x equals 55 eighths. And so I'm putting that back into my original. I have negative 1 to the n, 8 to the n plus 1 over n plus 4 times I have 55 over 8 minus 7 to the n. All right, so when I check that and I clean it all the way up, I get the sum n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, 8 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times, that's going to give me, uh, looks like negative 1 eighth to the n. So again, this negative 1 to the n and this negative 1 to the n is going to cancel out. And so I'm just going to be left with the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 8 over um, n should be n plus 4. All right, now if I do a quick comparison test on this, so if I compare to the sum n equals 0 to infinity, um, I could do even 8 over n. We know that diverges. This harmonic. Or I could say p equals 1 is less than equal to 1, so I could say p series. And since we have... Um, n plus 4 is greater than n, and 1 over n plus 4 is less than 1 over n, um, and then 8 n plus 4 is less than 8 over n, um, so I'm less than, uh-oh, I'm less than a converge, that's going to give me a problem. I want to be greater than a diverge, um, so we got to figure that out, what's going on here, we might need to change our test. Um, so maybe I can do, instead of a comparison test, maybe I could do a limit comparison test on it, since I got inconclusive for that. All right, we want to make sure we know, we don't want to like guess, we want to make sure we know for sure. Um, so if I change it to do a limit comparison, I could say like a sub n equals 8 over n plus 4, and then b sub n equals 1 over n. And then if I do the limit as n goes to infinity of... 8n over n plus 4 equals 8, which is positive and finite. Um, and since the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n diverges by harmonic, we also know that the sum n equals 0 to infinity of our function, we'll call it a sub n, diverges by limit comparison test. All right, so that one's diverging for sure. Um, all right, so then I got to check the other endpoint of x equals 57 over 8. So plugging that into my original, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, um, and then I'm going to have 8 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And I'm times that by 57 over 8 minus 7 to the n. And when I times that out, I get the sum n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 8 to the n plus 1 over n plus, um, I keep saying plus 1, this should be plus 4, plus 4 times 1 eighth to the n. Now if I simplify that, breaking it all down using my exponent rules, I get negative 1 to the n times 8 over n plus 4. Now for this, because it's alternating, I've got to run an alternating series test on it. So I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of 8 over n plus 4. That equals 0, so I'm good there. And then I can do, um, real quick, I can check, I don't know, let's check that as decreasing. So I can say like n, so that's the n plus 1. Um, I can say n plus 4 is less than n plus 5, and 8 over n plus 4 is greater than 8 over n plus 5, therefore is decreasing. 
so I'm converging by alt series. All right, so I have one endpoint that diverged. I have one endpoint that converged. So again, my interval of convergence, I need to write it accordingly with brackets and parentheses. The first one diverged, so I'm going with parentheses 55 over 8. And the second one converged, that was 57 over 8 with a bracket. And then my radius is the halfway between the two. So my radius is going to be between halfway between 55 over 8 and 57 over 8. That's going to be 1 over 8. All right, I know I just did a whole lot, so if you guys have questions, please, please, please text me, email me, call me, do what you got to do. All right, see you guys later.